Hello everyone, my name is Anton Pelcher. I'm an engineer and I've been constructing fish farms for more than 10 years. Today I'm going to tell you how to start your own side business with a stable income of at least some tens of thousands US dollars per year. Be sure to watch the whole video, because I'm going to tell you how to avoid 5 typical mistakes when starting fish farming business and prevent the loss of your investment. First, you need to decide on the type of fish. The main types for farming in Russ are sturgeon, trout, African catfish, shrimp, crayfish, whitefish and maybe tilapia. We will analyze each of these fish types in details in our coming videos, so be sure to watch them. But this time I'm going to analyze sturgeon farming business. Why? Because, for example, in Russia and the CIS countries, sturgeon is a very popular fish species. This means that you will never have problems with finding sturgeon fry, the farming process and the sales. Basically, all the paths to sturgeon farming are known. We have decided that we want to farm sturgeon. Let's have a look at the options to earn money from sturgeon fish farming business. Of course, the most common option is grow out fish farming. It's ground for meat. This is the very situation when you print fry to a farm, then you feed it to grow out size and sell it to restaurants, markets, shops and wherever else. The second option is farming fry for sale. The difference here is that you farm sturgeon to a small weight, so you import and incubate fertilized eggs yourself and grow them to the size of fry. This can be any weight from 1 to 10 grams. Sometimes this can be even fingerlings, which can be sold as a stocking material. What is a stocking material? This is the starting material, which is stored in special tanks. It is used for farming grow-out fish. There is a demand for fry in the reproduction of bioresources. Also, there is a demand for fry in compensation for damage caused during the construction of hydraulic structures, during the construction of gas pipelines and oil pipelines. In fact, there is a constant and stable demand for fry, so you will have no difficulty selling fry. The third option is sturgeon farming for caviar. Well, probably all of you know that sturgeon caviar is a very valuable product. People love it, buy it, eat it, and they buy it for quite impressive amounts of money. That's why farming sturgeon for caviar is one of the most profitable businesses. Of course, fish farming for caviar has its own peculiarities related to the fact that it's necessary to farm breadstock that will provide you with caviar, and this is not always a simple and cheap idea. Therefore, the investments of time and money in sturgeon farming for caviar are more than for grow-out sturgeon farming and fry farming. The fourth option is holding and reselling fish. In fact, this business is suitable for people who are not ready to set up their own farm and engage in their own fish farming, but at the same time want to try and start with sales. Imagine you are in a city with a population of 500,000 people. You put a facility in any part of the city that would be convenient for delivery throughout the rest of the area. Accordingly, you put several fish holding tanks, buy fish from other companies, which can be located 100 to 200, 300 or even 500 kilometers away from you. Then you put fish in your tanks and then you can perfectly deliver it to customers who buy fish wholesale or retail. Then you can use this whole holding facility to deliver fish around the rest of the city. So, you buy fish wholesale, then you sell it wholesale and retail, and then you earn just the same from the margin, which is your profit. The fifth option is fish farming for stocking. Imagine that there is a large number of companies in our country that are engaged in the construction of highways, roads, bridges, oil pipelines, gas pipelines and various structures that somehow come into contact with the environment. In particular, they come in contact with open reservoirs and during the construction of all these structures, the company damages the environment and then environmentalists interfere. After that, they consider the damage done and say that you need to stock 1 million pieces of sturgeon fry. Then company begins to look where to buy this amount of sturgeon fry. And here comes the business of bioresources reproduction and damage compensation. You can sign a contract with this company to farm these million pieces of sturgeon fry and sell them so that the company stocks this sturgeon into a river or other open reservoir. Thereby, it solves the issue related to the claim from the environmentalists. 
So, you have decided to set up a small farm. Let's make calculations for the minimum possible option. What does the cost of sturgeon consist of? These are feed, fry, electricity, heating, stuff, water and sewage if the farm is located in the city, and some maintenance costs. A detailed analysis of costs will be done in a separate video. Be sure to find it and watch. The total cost of sturgeon is approximately 4 US dollars per kilogram. It means you need to spend 4 US dollars to grow about 1 kilogram of fish. So let's start only from the hypothetical figure. We know that you can sell sturgeon wholesale and retail. The average market wholesale price for today is 9 US dollars per kilogram. The average retail price is 11 to 13 US dollars per kilogram of live fish. If that includes delivery, then the price will be 14 US dollars. Accordingly, you earn 5 US dollars wholesale from each kilogram of fish. You will earn more if you sell retail, but most likely you will spend on logistics and advertising, so there will be certain additional costs. Therefore, you will earn 6 US dollars per 1 kilogram of fish. Now we need to divide 14,000 by 6 US dollars net profit and it turns out 2.5 tons of grow out fish that you need to farm in order to earn 14,000 US dollars. In order to farm 2.5 tons of sturgeon per year, you need first of all, of course, insulated building with an area of at least 100 square meters. In one of the videos, I have presented a detailed information about how to construct a building, how much it costs, so be sure to watch the video. Now I am in just such a building where 2.5 tons of sturgeon are produced per year. In fact, this is really a small amount, but it's enough for you to have a deep dive into the business. This is of course not the final option for business development, because it's necessary to increase the capacity further, but it's a minimum for you if you want to start a business. And so, there are 4 grow out fish tanks, 5 cubic meters each. Also, there are 4 tanks for fry and pre-sale preparation tanks, with a volume of about 2 cubic meters each. In total, the volume of water in the system is about 28 to 30 cubic meters, which is enough to farm such an amount of fish and, of course, a water treatment system. The water treatment system consists of mechanical biological disinfection systems pumps. In fact, it's a unit, a water treatment module, that allows you to constantly recirculate and treat water in RAS. Also, small utilities are installed in this building, such as heating, ventilation, lighting, water supply and sanitation. The building needs minimal infrastructure in order to provide these tanks with water, electricity, light and so on. I want to draw your attention to the fact that when you launch this system and stock the first fish, you will have a certain period of time while the fish is growing. It will not be sold until you finish the previous cycles. So for the first six months or even a year, you will not receive grow out fish, but then you will immediately reach annual capacity and you will continue to have constant annual daily sales. You will be able to sell fish from your farm when you need it. Now I will tell you about five crucial mistakes that can ruin such a business. The first one is pond fry. If a fish lives in a pond, it carries a certain pathogenic microflora for sure. So it can be infected with bacteria, viruses and parasites, because it's an open pond and it's impossible to protect it from infection. That's why when you bring a pond fry to your farm, it experiences stress during transportation. Even if it looks healthy and wonderful, after transferring into tanks, it can quickly get sick and die. Also, it gets stressed and anything can happen to this fish especially if you already have other fish in the tanks. It can infect other fish from your broodstock, which has been growing for a long time. So, this is a threat to the entire farm. I don't recommend to buy fry from the pond and transfer it into the tanks. The second mistake. Many people think, what do I need equipment that costs money when I can just put fish holding tanks, drill a well, bring the water to the tanks and farm fish? Everything looks really great, but there is one thing. 
First, the fish needs water of a certain temperature. That is, the sturgeon will not live, or rather, it will live, but it will not grow normally in a well by water, which has a temperature of 10 degrees. The second point. You need to recirculate the water in the tank at least once an hour. This means that if you have 30 cubic meters of water, you need to change this water once an hour. That is, you need to supply at least 30 cubic meters of treated and oxygenated water per hour. It's almost impossible to supply that volume of water from any well that exists, with the exception of certain specific locations. The third point is oxygen. There is no oxygen in the well by water, and you need to saturate the water with oxygen so that your fish can live. Yes, of course, if you put three Christians into the tank, they will swim anyway. If you want to set up an efficient and productive farm, you will need to maintain maximum stocking densities. Sturgeon stocking density, as I have already said, is 50 to 70 kilograms per square meter of the tank area. In such situations, you definitely need to add pure oxygen to saturate water so that there is enough oxygen to suffice all this fish that lives in your tanks. The third mistake. Many people think that for a fish farm you just put a farm and that's all. This is partly true if it's about a small farm, but there are always some peculiarities. First, fish must be fed. Even if you installed automatic feeders, they need to be constantly replenished and controlled. Second, it's the equipment. It tends to malfunction. And even on a perfect farm, there are situations when some kind of accident occurs. And if no one is around, if no one controls it, then this can lead to fatal consequences. Why? Because after the pumps and the supply of fresh oxygen are turned off, the fish in the tanks lives no more than 30 to 60 minutes. That is, you need to solve any problem in a half an hour, and therefore, even if you don't maintain this farm yourself, you can leave it for a certain period of time. But at the same time, you must have automation that gives you notification of any equipment failure, and a person who can always come and fix the problem. The fourth mistake. People think they're going to place a fish holding tank in the street, supply some water there, and everything will be fine. Why should they construct buildings? Well, it's not that simple. For example, in Russia, the climate is known to be harsh. It's cold in winter and hot in summer. That's why your water will freeze in winter. In summer, water is heating too much, and your fish will not grow normally in such conditions. In addition, your fish can be stolen. There are many more reasons why putting fish holding tanks in the street is not always a good idea. In some specific cases, yes, it's possible. But at the same time, a person must understand why and how these tanks will be maintained. The fifth mistake concerns sales. People think that they just farm fish and customers will queue up. Unfortunately, this is not like this. That's why, when you are just starting to farm fish, and even better, when you are just thinking about it, you need to also think about marketing. Because marketing is the most basic thing. You can farm 500 tons of sturgeon and still not find sales market. For example, if you have a small farm, I recommend you to engage in retail because small farm wholesale has a low margin. Also, you will be able to provide the required volumes to wholesale customers. That's why I recommend retail, because your fish can be sold for 30% more than wholesale and thus compensate for the lack of volume with higher margins. That is, in fact, you deliver your products to your customers. To attract customers, advertising is required, including paid search, social networks, ads and banners. Also, you will need to develop your own customer base, use messengers and mailing. Well, you have to use anything for direct contact with your potential customers who eat sturgeon. If you have an industrial farm, then, of course, you need to think about wholesale because selling 50 tons of sturgeon in retail is a very difficult task. Therefore, I definitely recommend a specialist for such farms who will work on searching wholesale customers. Thus, by the time you receive the first product, you will already have contacts with many potential wholesale customers, and you will be able to start working with them right away. And if you are thinking about setting up your own fish farm, be sure to leave your contacts and links below. We will send you a table in which you can put the cost and sales prices relevant to your region and city. 
and then you will see the real prices that you will get if you set such a fish farm. My name is Anton Pelcher. Hit thumbs up button. Subscribe to my channel. We know how to farm fish and earn good money.